Hi there, Jamie Keat here today at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great day today. Today we're taking a look at Microsoft Excel. So this is a follow-up video from my first video, uh, kind of going over the beginners of Microsoft Excel. And this is still the beginners level, but just covering a few more things. All the different items that I'm gonna be talking about in this video are listed down below in the description. So just look at the description and then the timestamp so you can jump around uh, to different points uh, to get to exactly where you want. And make sure you hit that subscri subscribe button and that little bell notification, and then you'll get notified when my Nexus Excel videos come out. Also, check Check for other uh, video tutorials. If you're looking for the beginning tutorial one, check for the link down below or in the card up above. So let's start this level two beginners uh, tutorial in Microsoft Excel today. So the first thing I want to talk about to save you some time in Excel is the autofilling sequence. Now this is super easy to do and all you have to do, because a lot of times it's common to write, let's say, uh, the days of the week and you don't want to have to type them each time. So if I put, if I just type the word Monday, now Excel knows how to kind of help you out and kind of speed things along for you. So what I can do is if I just click on this, you can see there's the handle here and if I drag down, and you're getting a little hint what's coming off uh, with that little box on the side. You can see it just knows right away uh, that there's going to be a pattern there and it continues through. So remember a quick tip for my last uh, tutorial was just those quick adjustments to the column. So you can see how Wednesday doesn't fit. Just double click up here and it adjusts everything to fit. So if I was going to go to this one and I type uh, just M-O-N, it also knows that these are uh, short for the days of the week and will continue that pattern like so. You can also use this for months. So if I type January, so just even in the short form, I could do it in the long form too. If I go ahead and just pull it down, it will go no, to continue on through it. So that can save you a lot of time uh, when entering these. And also you can go ahead and if I go with this one, if I type, uh, I'll just type Monday again, or M-O-N, I've been showing you pulling down, but you can pull across to the right like so. And so if you're going across that way with your headings, it's very easy to just to pull through there. I'm just going to delete those. Now you can also do this with numbers. If I just had one number, uh, it doesn't recognize a pattern. All it's going to do is copy down. So if I go ahead and use this and pull down, it will just copy the same thing over and over again. But if I give it a pattern, Excel knows this and they can uh, then it can guess what's coming next. So if I put one, and then I just put two in here and I know that the increment is just going to be increasing by one. You need to make sure you highlight both now and then you can see how the little icon changed. If I drag this down now, it will just keep inc the increment will keep increasing by one. But if I had a different pattern, let's say if I used five and then I put 10 in here and then I highlight both. So again, make sure you highlight both and then drag down you can see that it recognizes the pattern like so. Now, <clears throat> some other things you can do also, I've been just showing you pulling down or to the right uh, with any of these too. So if I was gonna, I'm just gonna delete this and I'll start uh, from a fresh one. If I was gonna put uh, Monday, I'll just type Monday. Notice if I drag up, it will go backwards so it knows the pattern that way. And I can also drag to the left. So you don't have to be stuck with, uh, I think you can only go one way and it works with numbers too. So if I go and put my one and I'll put my two to make sure it recognizes the pattern and highlight both of these, you can see how it uh, will even go into the negative numbers like so. And I can do the same thing if I was uh, going across uh, this way, it will recognize this pattern, make sure you do both and I could drag it back this way and you're going to get into the negative numbers. So those are just some quick tips for autofill. I'm just going to show you real quickly how to make your own custom autofill if you needed to add something like, for example, names. So what you can do is if you know there's lists that you have that you wanted to create to save you some time, you can actually add them to autofill. So this is how you do it. Now I'm just going to go back up to file and click on it. And uh, when I go back, I'm going to go down to my options here. So with options opening up, I need to go to advanced and then scroll all the way to the bottom 
And then what we're gonna have is edit our custom list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this. So what I could do is go ahead and then just add them name by name. So if I was going through, you could see I could just write my names uh, down here and I could just hit enter and I could go through and then just keep uh, adding them like so. A different way you could do it is just import them. So if you did already have them typed up, uh, so if I go ahead and click this, so let's say this is a list here and I'm just gonna highlight and hit enter and then I'm gonna hit import. You can see how quickly they came in on it. So I'll hit okay and then I'm just gonna hit okay again. So in this case, if I started typing, if I wrote my name down, you can see that as I drag down, it autofills with what I created. So you could do the same thing with departments. If you have it typed up, uh, you can just pick that area or you can just go and type it in one by one, but that could save you some time uh, when entering, uh, if you are typing the same list over and over and over again to use that autofill function. So now I'm gonna show you the powerful sort feature inside Microsoft Excel. Now I have uh, the top 10 grossing movies of all time here. Can't believe Endgame's gonna end up on the top of the list and it's only been out for a little while here. But uh, what I need to do first is I'm gonna highlight uh, this list. So I'm just gonna go from here down to the bottom and I'm gonna sort this. And I'm gonna show you the quick sorts, but it's not gonna give me what I want right away. So uh, if I just go to the A to Z and click, all it does is put it in the alphabetical order. You can see from Avatar Avengers and it just sorted this out. All the numbers stayed correctly with it. So it sorted out uh, all, the, uh, all the correct uh, rows with it. But I want to make sure I get this uh, with the value, uh, this being the worldwide value being the thing that I want to sort it by. Uh, the other quick option is the Z to A, you can see, but it's not what I want. What I need to do is go into custom. Now I'm going to go up back up here again and I'm going to go to custom sort. So when I go to custom sort, I have some options here. Um, notice that uh, my data has header, so I'm going to click this and that's going to be in the top one. But right now what I'm going to do is sort by, well, I want worldwide. So worldwide. And do I want it on, you can look at the sort on, well, it's going to be values on this one. So I'm going to leave that at values. Do I want it largest to smallest or smallest to largest? Well, I want end game to be on top. So I'm going to go largest to smallest. I hit OK. And you can see uh, Avengers Endgame is now on the top. I have all these sorted out uh, through it just the way I want. So it's a quick way to do that custom uh, search. Now you can go add more levels to your uh, to your sort. I said search, but I meant sort. Uh, let's say if we go to these two right, uh, we'll go between yeah these two right here. So if we are going to go, uh, I'm going to copy this down. So now uh, Jurassic World is a little uh, tied with the Avengers, and I'm just going to make sure I'm going to change this right uh, right here. So I'm going to change one number and you can see when it's domestic actually it's a little less. So what I'm going to tell the custom sort is sort by worldwide first but then sort by domestic. And how you do this, so I'm going to go back up here, I'm going to make sure I have my what I want selected and I'm going to go up to my custom sort again, custom sort and uh, this time you can see I have my one uh, level here. I can add another level. So if I go add a level and this time for the second level, I want it to be sorted by domestic. Same thing, cell values, still want it largest to smallest. Now what should happen is uh, Jurassic and Marvel, uh, the Avengers should change place. So if I go ahead and sort it, you can see they did because these were two were tied already. So it put them in order. So it went to the next level to check the sort. So remember, you can add those other levels to your sort to get very specific in case there's the things that are the same. So make sure you take advantage of this uh, of the sort feature inside Microsoft Excel. So I just showed you how this sort feature works. If you like that, you're really going to like the filter option inside Microsoft Excel. Now I'm going to use the same data. I know this is a small set to work from, but it uh, shows how things can work very easily. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a filter to the top of these. I made a space in here, so I'm just going to highlight. I could highlight the whole row, but I'm just going to highlight where I want the filters just through there. So I select where I want it. I go back up to you see sort and filter and I'm gonna go ahead and click filter. And now you can see all these drop downs are added to above each one. So what this can do is real quickly, I'll just show you from the first column here with the title. If I drop down, you can see everything is selected. 
Uh, if I just wanted to see one of the things, so if I go ahead, I'm gonna go and deselect everything and I just wanna see Black Panther and I go ahead and hit OK and then it just filters everything out but based on the one I had. So if you did have a duplicate of something in it, it's not going to show up twice on the list but when you do your filter it will show you in all the duplicates. So if I had two Black Panthers it would show it underneath. So I can go back to it and I can select all again and add it and then they're back. Uh, how I like to use this in this case would be maybe under studio. You can see that I have different studios here. Uh, if I wanted to see maybe how Universal is doing. So I go ahead and click under this column now and I'm just gonna deselect everything and I'm gonna pick Universal, select, hit OK. And it just shows me how different things are doing within that. So you can quickly see, get that picture of the exact data that you need so you can analyze it even faster. So I'm just going to put this back. Actually, at any time you want to clear any of your filters, you can go back up uh, to here and you can see that we can go ahead and hit clear and everything goes back to normal. So let's look at a few other options inside the filter here. Uh, I'm going to work under worldwide here. So if I drop down, uh, you can see again all the numbers, but let's do some uh, some other things. So let's do some custom. So if I go to number filters, you can see as I go through, I could go uh, and pick, I could pick greater than, so I could put a number in between a number. Uh, I could do above average. So let's just see which ones are above average. So when I click it, it found the average and then it's going to make sure it shows me all the ones above average. So I have five of them that are uh, above average there. And again, I can go back and I can clear uh, these here. So I can go back to clear and then I can drop down and I can do other types of filters. I'm not going to show you all of them, but once you see all the different things you can do, if you want to do a custom, let's say if I wanted to be, if I say is greater than, so if I go here is greater than 2000 and then I'm going to say is less than 2,500. These numbers are actually all in billions. I don't have the billion numbers, so, uh, but that's why if you're looking at them wondering why those are so small, they actually are re representing billions. I just didn't write that on my table. So I hit OK and you can see now it found all the ones based on the filter that when I customized it, I said everything within this range and I can see uh, Titanic, Star Wars and the Avengers all fit within that. So the uh, filters and another powerful way to sort through your data, remember where to clear, where to add them and the custom one, I really like doing the custom to find exactly what you need and if you have large lists, like I said, this is a very small list I have but if you have a large list, you can find the exact things uh, that you need and save you a lot of time by using this uh, filter function. So for this next lesson, I just want to show you the rounding function. So this could be handy if you have a large set of data that you want to apply to uh, apply some rounding to. And I'm just going to show you the three different ways that you can do this. So if I was going to go to round first, and remember when you're starting these functions, I'm just going to put an equal sign in and I'm going to start typing and round in this one. So I'm going to click on this one and it says I need to have the number and then a comma and then the digit. So the digit's going to be how, where it's going to round to and I'll change it in a moment. I'm just going to start with zero but I click on this and then my comma and then the, just zero. So then I'm just going to close that and hit enter. You can see it took the 4.833 and put it to five. I can copy this down and you can see how everything rounds. So in this one, it was at 8.1, it went to eight, four stayed at four, 6.3 to six, and 9.5 to 10. Now I could force everything to round up. So in this case, again, go back to my equal sign first. I'm gonna start typing, I'm gonna go round up. So I click on this one, click my number, comma, and then zero again, close my bracket. And you can see, we'll see which ones are different here. You, this one went up to nine because we were rounding up on it, even though it was at 8.1. And the same thing with all of these down here. And then lastly, we have our round down. So if I go ahead and type this one in and then click again on it, comma, zero, and then like so, you can see how everything rounds down. Now what I'm going to do is just change the zero and you can see what it does. So if I go over here and then uh, you can see the formulas right up here and I'm just going to go and make a change here and I'm just going to go and put my uh, one in there. 
and now it's to the one place. So if I was gonna go back to it again, I'm gonna just go back to it and maybe I'll put three. And you can see now where it's rounding to, so it makes those adjustments. Now, I could copy these all down like this and then change each one. I would have to go through uh, back. I'm just gonna go Control Z back and I'm just gonna show you a quick way that you can make an adjustment. If I highlight everything like this and I'm just gonna go to Control F, which is the find and replace, and I have the highlighted area. And what I'm gonna do is find what? So I'm gonna say everything that is comma zero, I want it to change to comma two. So I'm just gonna go uh, replace all and hit okay and close. And you can see now it went through and changed, it turned that zero to one. So that's just a quick way to use the find and replace tool, just a little tip that you can use it in other places too, but do remember that's there for you. So that's the round uh, rounding functions. Hopefully that can help you out with some of the data that you're working with. So right before I start this next part, I just want to mention I have a different video coming out about uh, the shortcuts in Excel for beginners. So take a look for that in the description down below for a link or in the card up above. But so for this part, I want to try to explain uh, cell positioning with relative and absolute and why you might not why you might not need to be using this uh, inside your spreadsheets. So I'm going to start with relative relative here. So uh, I'm going to go and just create a simple formula for this one up here. And if I go ahead, so I'll put my equal sign and I'll just click on this and I'm going to multiply uh, multiply this just by a 1 here and I should get 10. So if I uh, copy this down you can see all the simple multiplication uh, that takes place through these. Uh, I'm going to check each cell so as I said if I go through and just hit F2 you can see it's B1 times A1. If I click on a different cell if I click on the next one hit F2 you can see it's B2 times A2 and then it's V3 times A3. So it's uh, shifting down and it's changing both places. So if I went and copied this entire row this way, you can see, and the numbers get big pretty quickly, but if I go and click uh, in a spot again and I just go back and hit my F2, you can see it's D4, C4. So it's shifting over to the right now. Now when I use absolute, I can tie it to a certain place and that's what I'm going to show you in the next example. I can change which one I want to be relative and which one I want to be absolute. All right, so now what we're going to do is add a dollar sign to our formula and you're going to see how it turns into absolute positioning uh, to we're going to do column A. So if I do my formula again, click and I'll just click here and get my uh, multiplied by this. And what I want to do now when I got this selected, I'm going to use F4. So if I hit F4 once, you can see the dollar sign means absolute A absolute one. So if I hit it uh, again, you can see it's uh, A absolute one there. And if I hit it again, it's absolute A one. So this will lock it into position for that first column. And you're gonna see what happens when I do this. So if I hit enter, you're not gonna notice uh, any difference with the equation here because everything's just locked into place. But now if I drag this over to the different spot here, what you're going to be able to see though is how it differs here. So if, if I, let's drag this a few more over here too. So I'm going to drag this just over a few more times. And if I check, so remember hitting F2, I'm just going to go ahead and hit F2. Notice that it didn't move out of uh, the column A. It's locked into that. Now the other one is relative. As I move across, you can see now it's in uh, D7 that it's multiplying, but I've locked it into this spot. So this would be the absolute A in relative one that I picked before. You can see absolute A relative seven, A7 on this one. So that, uh, lo that, with that dollar sign in front of that, one that locks it into the row. Let's take another look at adjusting it to a different positioning. So let's look at absolute absolute here. So if I, uh, I've changed up my numbers a little bit here, but if I go to this cell and I'm just going to do my formula again, uh, this time I want this and I want this multiplied uh, by uh, this top spot right here. So A1, but I need to change uh, that A1. So what I wanted to do is I'm going to hit F4 and I want to go absolute, absolute. So I'm going to hit enter and now it's 7 times 2 is 14. You can see that's what we want. I'm going to drag this down here. And then at that point, if I check these, so using F2 again, 
I'm going to hit F2. Notice that this one moved down on it. So we have uh, A6 is moved down from over the top. It's moving down. But A1, we made that absolute. That stays the same on all of it. So even if I uh, was going to copy this the other way, across and if I any of these I click in and hit F2 again you can see it stays in the spot so if there's one number you want to adjust so if this number was changing to something else so if I go ahead and adjust this I'll put 5 you can see how everything adjusts uh, to it because that's the absolute reference to part of that formula uh, part of that equation that I created so lastly with this referencing, cell referencing, I just want to lock a row in place. So what I'm going to do is create my simple formula uh, like I've done before and I'm just going to put my equals and I'm going to multiply this uh, here by this. So I'm going to go to my F4 key and I'm going to click it. That's my absolute absolute because the dollar sign shows that it's absolute for both but I don't want that. I want just the row. So then this would be the one I want is uh, it's going to be a absolute one here and I'm just going to hit enter on this one. So if I go and move this across now you can see how everything works but now if I was going to take this whole uh, whole row and move it down now if I can check with my F2 function so if I go through here F2 you can see how uh, this is moving here but then notice that the row is it's still up in C1 here so it's the relative the row the row is absolute to it and everything else uh, is varying as I move it down but this stays in place so if I click on this one over here and hit F2 you can see the formula the two that are connected on this one so those are just different positioning depending what you want remember to use the F4 key the dollar sign in front will mean the absolute uh, if there's nothing that's going to be the relative so if you get if you set up your spreadsheets with uh, correct it can save you a lot of time uh, when managing all of your data so I hope you like this tutorial here, this level two beginners tutorial. As I said, I'll have some more coming out. Let me know in the comments down below what you're looking for and I can create some more. I'm looking at doing some on pivot tables and a few other ones coming up here, but do let me know if this is useful for you. Thanks for watching this week on Teachers Tech. I'll see you next time.